Hi, maybe my song is song number two called Crashing Down. And your song is about unrequited love? Yes. Yes. Can one of you tell me a little bit about the story behind the song? Well... <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you answer that. Has somebody had on... No, maybe I shouldn't ask that. <laughs> a song is what you make it. Uh, it, it was written by a guy called Rob Grace, so, uh, you know... What the meaning of the song is is ultimately what it meant to him at the time, but as with every song, it is what you make of it and how it, it reflects for you, you know? Yeah. It's become very prominent and very meaningful for the two of us because uh, we had the unfortunate incident of losing a song a few days before uh, we were due to actually submit uh, the Thursday that they play them on the Mooney show. Uh, we found the Monday night that we couldn't use the song that we originally had. So uh, the title Crashing Down kind of describes our world yes. <laughs> over the space of two or three days. Uh, and especially for Amy, you know, um, you know, to get used to a song, to have recorded a song, for everything to be ready, and then all in of what, it suddenly... six hours? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, subsequently, we, we turned it around in the space mm -hmm. of uh, two days. But it has particular meaning to the two of us, I think, and everybody that was involved with it, because it's sort of, it's a reflection of what actually happened over those uh, three days. She's part of the act. She's part yeah, of the act. She yes. plays piano. <laughs> you want to see her, see her behind the scenes? Yeah, um, yeah. So now that you've gone through that, um, are, are you, I suppose the anxiety of having a new song has, has long gone, you're well, you, you, you're well used to it, you've practiced it a lot of times, you've done the video of the song. Um, what, what are your feelings about what life might do to you should you succeed yeah. and get to Eurovision? It doesn't matter whether you win, but at this stage, yeah. going to Malmo, can you can you imagine what it's going to be like? Yes, um, I think because of all the speed bumps that we've had, it's made me want it even more. Like the drive of it is even ten times even more than it was. Um, I think everything happens for a reason. The song is incredible, so I think that we're actually kind of lucky that that happened. Um, it would be absolutely amazing to represent Ireland in Eurovision and go to Sweden. Um, that's the fun part. Right? Yeah, that's you the, know for us. Exactly, I mean, the, yeah. the whole mentoring, finding the song, finding the act. You mm -hmm. know, that's the really hard work. It's not like they, you know, you go, I'll have uh, that song and uh, that act. Yeah, please. it's you know, behind the scenes. A lot, scenes, lot of that. time, a lot yeah. of effort. Two weeks in Eurovision will be unforgettable. Yeah. Yeah. Even for us going as the press, and I've been for quite a few years. Yeah. It's it, uh, it's it's Great just something that you yeah. will. That will it will change your life. Yeah. Um, what are your aspirations? What would you mean? What would you like your career to do, irrespective of Eurovision? It would be music, regardless whether Eurovision or not. I would be pursuing my dream in music. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't bring my notes. They're sitting over there. Um, what attention have you have you had attention from? Um, I mean, apart from your from, from your song, what what were you doing before your song came along? Um, I was just at home and doing school and um, uploading videos onto YouTube and oh, that, that's trying to get recognised. Now I remember you've had a phenomenal number of followers uh, on, your, on, on YouTube haven't you? Yes, um, I'm very lucky. I have a lot of followers on Twitter and stuff. Very, people are really really supportive. Um, I just post my video online and I get really good reactions. So. you get hundreds of thousands of people mm. watching it. I know, yeah. <laughs> so you really have a passion for music, yes. for interpreting other artists songs? Well, I, that's just something I enjoy to do as well. I like to take an artist's song that I really like at the time and just try and make it my own. That's what I really like to do. <laughs> so, uh, do, is, is it a daunting task to go out on the on, on the Late Late Show stage? Are you quite chilled about the whole thing? How um, do you feel? No, I'm chilled. I'm excited and nervous and anxious and curious and every feeling that there is, but um, I am really excited. Yeah, can we? <laughs> All I can do is, is wish you luck. You're on your own on the stage. Anybody no, else? Um, there's three backing vocals. Okay. And um, we have a, a player with us who you might recognise. Okay. <laughs> um, Surprise. Yeah, well, <laughs> Paul Arrington. Okay, so excellent. Well, so along. you've yeah. has he t uh, well, before I finish? Has he told you anything about his experiences? Yes, then? he's definitely <laughs> given me his tips, and he's been great. Paul is Paul actually great played fun. on the yes. the record as well. So um, you know, it was great to have him involved. The whole thing for me when we, I started looking for a song and and an act and what I was going to do for as a mentor for your song, it was very much based on my past experience with Eurovision. And I tried to think back as to when you know Eurovision really stood out for me, and it was with Paul and, and Charlie with the song Rock and Roll Kids. And he was a surprise winner, so yeah. he must have suddenly had everything his, his life 
It was yeah. um, you couldn't describe the fact of not really expecting anything and then being thrust in the limelight. Absolutely. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm sure you look as if you're you're you're, you're well able for it. I right. wish you good luck. Ready. Yeah. Young, full of energy, and whatever comes, you know, yes. you'll cope with it. Listen, thank you very much for your time. It's much yeah. appreciated. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thank you.